uh, deacons, Deacon Rick and Deacon Charlie, uh, this morning. This gives us, this is the way the liturgy uh, is really meant to be in ideal circumstances where you have a deacon of the word and a deacon of the Eucharist or the altar. Did I get that right? All right, so one, uh, Deacon Rick, is the deacon of the word, and Deacon Charlie will be the deacon of, at, the, at, the, uh, at the altar. But I, how blessed we are, how blessed I am uh, to have, uh, to have uh, both deacons and have Chris Conley uh, preparing. Uh, way back in 1782, right here in good old New Hampshire, uh, in a little town named Salisbury, it's just outside of Franklin. Anybody been there? Franklin, you know where Franklin is? A, little, a baby boy was born, and uh, they named him Daniel. Anybody idea who it is? Huh? Webster, okay, Dan Webster. And Daniel Webster uh, studied at Phillips Exeter Academy, which was here back then, graduated from Dartmouth College, and uh, went on to be a congressman from uh, New Hampshire, and then uh, a congressman and a senator from Massachusetts, and eventually Secretary of State. And uh, he was called the Great Orator. This was before they had microphone systems. Uh, Daniel Webster. Well, there's, there's a true story. Uh, around 1840, in the Capitol Rotunda, uh, Congress was having a break, and someone brought up the topic of uh, of Christianity, and did anybody really know of a real Christian? Did they know of anybody who was true, the real thing, genuine, that really believed, really lived it out, uh, was truly uh, a Christian, and no one could think of anybody? And finally, Daniel Webster said, I know a woman in the hills of New Hampshire who's a real Christian. I know a woman in the hills of New Hampshire who's the real thing. Now keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. He knew one person, one person uh, who, who was Christ, the image of Christ. Uh, the gospel we just had is from St. Mark, and you have the four evangelists up here, and Mark is the original gospel, the very first gospel uh, only Matthew was written to the, to the Jewish people. The other three were written uh, for the Greeks, for the Romans, for the Gentiles, anybody who was not, uh, not Jewish. And, and Mark, uh, we think, was written shortly after St. Peter's crucifixion. Uh, St. Peter was crucified on Vatican Hill in Rome, and Mark was his companion so we figure around, maybe around the year 65, uh, Mark uh, published the gospel, his gospel. It was written in Greek because that was the language of, of learning. Uh, and what's extraordinary in this episode we just heard, Jesus is the Jewish Messiah, and he goes first to the house of Israel, to his own people, but Today, he leaves Jewish territory and he goes to the Decapolis and now he is in Gentile territory. And the people bring him this man who was deaf uh, and who can't speak very well, a speech impediment. He's not Jewish. This man is not Jewish. And they, they, they bring him to Jesus and beg him to lay hands on him, to cure him. That's the symbol of healing, when Christ lays his hands on him, then he puts his fingers in his ears and his fiddle on his tongue, all these physical, physical gestures uh, to, 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 to heal him. But the big, the big message here, folks, is that Jesus has moved from being the Jewish Messiah to the Savior of all people. He's reached out now beyond uh, his own people to everybody. And so that one man represents all the Gentiles. 
And, and the Gospels are so rich, so powerful. St. Augustine said there were seven different levels of interpretation. Seven. But you can see, opening the ears of this Gentile means that now the Gentiles can hear the Gospel. See? It's all right there. Or the tongue, loosening the tongue that they may speak. Now they may spread the Gospel. They may speak of the good news. They may praise God as followers of Christ. So the ears are open, the tongue is made clear. All of those things now are happening to the Gentiles, to the rest of the people. Evangelization. You hear about a lot about evangelization. Uh, and Catholics have been, in our history, we have been great evangelizers, great evangelizers. I just met a lady here from California. Where are you? Cal California, okay. You go up and down the coast of California, beginning with San Diego, go up and down the coast, all the different saints, uh, San Francisco, Santa Clara, or the Sacramento, San Bernardino. That's evangelization. Evangelization is when you introduce somebody to Jesus Christ. When you introduce them, and they brought this deaf man, they brought him to Jesus. He didn't know Jesus. They brought him to him, and he introduced him and said, cure him, heal him. That's evangelization, when you bring somebody uh, to, to, to Jesus uh, Christ. Uh, and I asked the, the kids at the 8.30 Mass this question, who introduced you to Jesus Christ? Your parents, your grandparents, your family, the parish, who introduced you to Jesus Christ? Now this, I'm, what I'm going to say now, I think is so important. Before you begin religious education with children or adults, it is presumed that they are evangelized. It is presumed that they have met Jesus Christ. Evangelization's got to come first. And then once you meet him, like this deaf man did, then you want to learn more about him. Then begins the faith formation, the religious education, which goes on for the rest of our lives here on earth. But evangelization's got to come first. We've got to meet Jesus Christ. And then we learn about him, and we fall in love with him, actually. So who, who introduced you to Jesus Christ? And I told the kids, you know, you probably have a lot of friends who have no church, they've never been baptized. Uh, welcome, bring them here. We'll be happy to have them here uh, at St. Catherine Drexel because we want to evangelize. We want to introduce people to Jesus Christ. And Deacon Charlie always uh, begins his homilies by, by, by saying, members of the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So in that sense, when people come in here, they meet the risen Christ through us, the body of Christ. They meet the risen Christ. Who introduced you to Jesus Christ? Whoever that woman was in the hills of New Hampshire evangelized Daniel Webster. All you need is one. He knew one person who was a real Christian, and if I can just say this, I think it's true, we really become a Christian by meeting a Christian, by getting to know a Christian. It was that one woman who evangelized Daniel Webster. We just have to have one person uh, who truly is transformed and a member of the body of Christ. I think it's extraordinary. Now, we began this morning, I, there were well over 100 kids. I don't remember how many there were. There, there had to be 125, 130 kids down there. Every, every classroom was filled. All of these kids were there. You folks were there. I saw you there. You were all there. Um, and and, and uh, uh, we, we're, we're grateful. We're so grateful to God that we have uh, young families. That we have, we, There's a baby going to be baptized after Mass. Is that your baby? Okay, is that Deacon Charlie? Okay, we've got a baby being baptized. All of these things are beautiful. Spreading the faith, evangelizing, introducing people to Jesus Christ. At noontime, 
We're going to have about 20 people meeting under Linda Hilton, who's, who's heading up the RCIA, and we're organizing for the right of Christian initiation for adults. We already have a couple of people who are interested in becoming members of the church, becoming Catholic, receiving the sacraments, especially at Easter time. If you know of anybody, if there's anybody here who would like to get to know Jesus Christ, be evangelized, and become part of the mystical body of Christ, we are ready and willing to go. Whether you, they're, they're children, whether they're teenagers, whether they're middle-aged or senior citizens like me. Uh, you look great, Bob, with those two kids. Look at that. Isn't that great? Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, I'm very proud. I, I baptized, I married them, and I baptized their two kids. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That, that's, that, that's, that's a beautiful picture of, of evangelization, of, of what it's all about to be, wish we had a camera. Absolutely perfect. But if you know of anybody, if you're here or, or in yourself would like to become part of the church, if you know of anybody, please let us know. We've got 20 people who are willing to meet, to telephone call, whatever it takes to invite people uh, to become a part of the uh, mystical body of Christ and, and the church. I have one other question. Why would Daniel Webster leave New Hampshire? <laughs> I, just, I, just, I don't understand. I don't understand. I, I really don't. Now, uh, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Sharon Norby. Sharon, Sharon, you want to come up? Oh, I'm sorry, Paula Garvey. Paula Garvey, I'm sorry, Paula Garvey. Uh, and Paula Garvey is going to invite us to evangelize one-on-one. One-on-one. Paula Garvey, you're Thank you very much, Father Cole, and good morning, everyone. As Father mentioned, I, I don't know if he did mention, but I, I'm a member of the Family uh, Friendly Visitors Ministry Committee. I'm one of three coordinators for this ministry here at St. Catherine Drexel, along with Sharon Norby and Colleen Southern. Uh, for your information, the idea of forming this ministry was presented to the Parish Council for approval on June 8, 2016 by Council Members Donna King and Paula Garvey. Given the go-ahead by the Council, which we needed, we proceeded slowly with the guidance of Glenn Campbell of Catholic Charities and fervent prayers to our patroness, St. Catherine Drexel. Since its inception, our volunteers, some 15 in number, have responded to requests to visit those who might be alone, isolated in some way. We also have virtually visited a number of folks on the church prayer list that you hear every weekend, sending them a card or a note making a phone call to let them know, as the parish, they are in our thoughts and in our prayers. Most recently, you might remember that during Memorial Day weekend, and with your help, which was overwhelming to say the least, we wrote cards, notes, to those military, uh, military personnel for whom we also pray every weekend. Additionally, during the 4th of July week, we placed a notice in the bulletin and a box in the narthex requesting a variety of items for those ser serving, from snacks to sunscreen, eye wash, toiletries, playing cards, and the like. Your generous response allowed us to fill more than 13 boxes, which were sent along with the card and the prayer to those in the service. In each case, we received word how grateful they were and how meaningful it was to know we are thinking of them, praying for them, and are grateful for the, their service to our country. Now, the Friendly Visitors is reaching out in another way. We are hosting a simple supper in the parish hall on Saturday, September 22nd, after the 4 p.m. Mass. Sole purpose 
is to bring us together around the table in a relaxed and friendly way. We are urging you to come bring a friend, a neighbor, someone who might be new to our parish or might not regularly attend events here at St. Catherine Drexel and who might like to get to know others. The good news is that there will be no cost to this supper. You don't have to buy a ticket. It's going to be a traditional Yankee ham and beans Saturday night meal. In your bulletin, please take note when you leave, in your bulletin is a flyer providing you with the complete menu and short reservation form to fill out and return so we can plan accordingly. The flip side of this message is that we have to limit the number to 125 people. So it'd be best to get your slip in a box at the back of the church or in the um, basket by next week. We need to plan accordingly. Thank you. Think of the number of times this is important in the scriptures that Jesus gathers around the table with his friends and his companions to eat, to teach, to listen, to be together as a community. We are looking to do the same, and so we invite you to join us if your schedule permits. There will be a friendly visitor volunteer in the NAFAX after Mass should you have any questions or if you would like more information about this ministry. I will also be available to help you. Thank all of you so much for your attention and to your generosity to us in the past. And a special thanks to Father Cole for his support. And God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so there it is, one on one. If you can invite just one person uh, to come with you, uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, once they meet Jesus Christ, get out of the way. So let's continue now.